Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and in this video I'm going to be giving you an update on Home Builder 3. If you're not familiar with Home Builder, it's an add-on for Blender that streamlines the process of designing interior architectural spaces. The goal of Home Builder is to not only help with the design process, but also allow manufacturers to generate the manufacturing data, pricing information, and 2D plan and elevation drawings. There's currently a strong focus on kitchens, baths, and closets for homes. But as development continues, the ability to create entire homes will be possible to provide a breakdown of all of the materials, products, and building information. Now I'm going to talk more about this in a bit, but let's go and take a look at how the new version works. So to start out, Home Builder now works as a standard add-on to Blender. Here if we go to the preferences, we can install the add-on just like any other add-on, but once we have it enabled here, all of the functionality is going to be displayed in the 3D view sidebar. And when you first enable it, you'll need to go to one of these libraries and click Reload Library and make sure that Auto Run Python Scripts is enabled. Once you do that, the library thumbnails will display and you can begin designing. Now one thing I like to do is I like to maximize the viewport. So if you type control space, that'll just maximize the 3D view. And one setting that I have changed here is I disable the relationship lines. This just cleans up the drawing quite a bit when working with Home Builder. I have a few other settings changed from the default, but I'll create a video that goes over the way that I have Blender set up, but it's pretty much just the standard version of Blender here. So to design, we have the Rooms tab here, and here we can enter in the default wall height and thickness and then click this draw wall button and here we can click points to draw out our room and so here we can just select values here we can also type in exact values that we want to use for our design and when we're done drawing we can either right click or type escape to cancel that command and if you want to continue drawing you can just click the draw wall button again click on one of the end segments and then continue drawing your walls and if you wanted to close the room, you can type C on your keyboard, and that'll just connect the segment to the first point that you drew there. So now we have our basic room layout created. If we wanted to change the height of our room after we have it drawn, we could do that. We can just change the wall height here, and then click this refresh button, and that'll change the height of our room. We can also change the lengths of these segments by selecting on them, and we can here change the default wall length in the properties or if we want to we can select and then right click every object within home builder has a prompts interface and so if we click on this here we can type in the exact dimensions that we want for our room here so we can just type those in and create the exact size that we want for the room that we're going to work with Next, if we go to the current room tab and click collect walls, this will give us a list of all of the walls in our design. And if we want to, we can click this icon here to hide certain walls. This is really helpful when designing small spaces so you can just better see the area that you're designing in. You can also click this view button here if you want to see just a straight elevation of that. And you can continue designing on this. And you're still working in a 3D view. And here you can just enable the different walls that you want to see. And it also turns it to orthographic view. But here you can toggle between those views with this icon. There's a few other tools to add a room light and a floor that we can also enable here but I've reorganized the library a little bit. I now have this products library, which is intended to display all of the products that may need to be purchased or built for our design. So we have things like cabinets, appliances, doors, windows, bathroom fixtures, and I'll be adding a lot of other libraries as I continue development from different lighting fixtures to furniture and things that you want to add to your interior design. But these work just like you'd expect. Here, if we go to the doors and windows, we can just drag in these components. You can see they snapped walls just like they did before, but everything is added right here from the 3D view. And each of these product libraries have a custom interface that can be created. So for the doors and windows here, we have a different interface to control the different components of our door. So if we wanted to change the door panel or the door frame, we can just select these here, and that's going to be the default that's used when we add items from our library. And of course, if we wanted to, we can always change a specific asset. So if we right click to access the prompts of this entry door here, we can change the height of that. We can change its location on the wall. 
we can open the doors, we can change the door swing. We have all sorts of different options that we can work with, including the ability to change out the components for this specific door. And so now if we go to our cabinet library here, we have the same thing to where we have an interface of all sorts of different defaults that we can change from the hardware to the door style that's gonna be used to our cabinet sizes. And so here I'm just gonna go ahead and change some of these values here to be a little bit different. Um, and you can just set this up specific to the room that you're working on. But now when I draw in cabinets for my library, they're gonna use those settings. And so you can see that we can just drag these components in, they snap just like you would expect. You can add them here to the left or you can add them to the right. If we wanna place an appliance, maybe a refrigerator next to that cabinet, we can place that like so, and just continue drawing our room. Now, just like the doors and the windows and walls and everything, if we select on a cabinet and right click, we have the prompts specific to this cabinet. So we can change its size. We have different options that we can modify here. If we go to the exterior, we can change the door swing for the top and the bottom door and make sure that the information for the asset just matches what we want for our design. Now here, if we wanted to place a range in the center of this, here if we go to our appliances, and we'll just drop this range. It's important to know that every one of these not only have a prompts interface, but it may have commands. And these are helpful when it comes to placing these on the wall. We also have access to deleting these. And so rather than using the standard Blender commands when it comes to grab, rotate, scale, and delete, you wanna make sure you look at the commands that are available. And so here if we use this place appliance on wall, here we have all sorts of different options. So if we wanted to bump this all the way to the left or the right, we could do that. If we want it to fill that entire area, we can. If we wanted to center it in that, we can do that as well. And here we can change the dimensions. Maybe we're using a 46 inch range. We could do that and click OK. So it just gives us much easier ways of placing these assets. We can do the same thing for the cabinet. So if we put in a one door base here, we could use the place cabinet on wall command and do the same thing. Maybe we want to fill that space, but maybe we'll add in a couple of different cabinets. So we'll put a quantity of three and click OK, and that will evenly space the cabinets in that opening. We can do the same thing on the right hand side here. Let's go and fill that with three, and it gives us commands to very easily lay out our design. Maybe we'll finish this up here. We'll go and put an upper stacked cabinet in this area and we'll do the same thing. We'll just go and fill that and we'll put a few cabinets in there. So placing products from the library is very easy to do to lay out your room, but we also have this build library. Now I'm gonna create a video that goes over all the features of this because it's very flexible when it comes to creating custom items. Because you can begin with a starter component like a base cabinet or a number of different openings and start configuring that by placing these inserts and parts to create something that is totally custom. But rather than starting with one of these starters here, there's a helpful command in our cabinets to where we can clear out the carcass. And so if we do that, that just removes the door and gives us an opening that we can begin adding items to. And so here, if we go to the inserts, here we have this fixed shelf, which is a very helpful insert, which will fill that opening, but split it. And so here, if we wanted to place a fixed shelf right there, we now have two openings that we can work with. Maybe we wanted to split it one more time and we can just place our fixed shelf right there. Maybe we want upper doors in this section. So we can just drag some upper cabinet door here and then we can put in a base cabinet door down here and maybe we go to our cabinet accessories. Here we have this wine rack insert that we can just drag right into this opening. And each of these have their own prompts. And so if we select on this base door and right click, here we can see access to the door prompts. And so here we can change the swing of that door. We can have a hinge on the top or the bottom and we can make whatever modifications we want to this component, even changing the overlay. So if we want that to be an inset front or change the left or the right to be a half overlay, there's all sorts of different options. And whatever component that you have selected, there's gonna be 
specific options for that component that you can work with. Now this library is how I'm going to be implementing the way of adding built-in appliances. So being able to add in an oven that's integrated into a cabinet, there will be some additional categories that can be added to be able to easily place appliances into cabinets as well. But it's a very flexible feature. And again, I'm gonna do a video specifically on that because there's a lot of functionality that is available with that. Now, apart from that, we also have ways of changing our cabinets after we've gone through the design process. So like you saw before, here if we wanted to change out the cabinet hardware, we could do so. So if we wanted to maybe change to this wire pole, we can select that and then update all. You can see that that changes out the hardware. And if we wanted to, maybe we wanted to turn off all of the handles in our design, we can very quickly iterate through a lot of different designs with this. Maybe if we wanted to change our cabinet fronts, here we can specify that we wanna use the front library. And here we'll just use the shaker door, so we'll just go and update all. And there it went through our design and changed out the fronts. And all these are still parametric, so we can change the sizes of these cabinets and everything will still continue to work. Next, we have the decorations library. And so these are just standard Blender objects and you can maintain your own library of decorations that you can save or remove to. So here, if you wanted to add in a salt and pepper shaker to the countertop here, you can just quickly drop this in. And these libraries, like I said, are customizable. And so here we have some sample libraries that come with Home Builder, but here I'm gonna go ahead and install a new library. So if I go to the About interface and click on Installed Libraries, again, right now Home Builder comes in with a whole set of built-in libraries that you can begin working with. But if you go to the Add Library button, here you can browse to a library pack. And here I have this dark kitchen pack that has some decorations and some materials included and so if we click add external library we can see now in our installed libraries we have this dark kitchen pack and we can see the path to where it's located but by doing that we now have access to an additional category and so here i've saved these from imesh which is a really great website where you can get some high quality assets that work with Blender and so those can range from just standard decorative objects or an entire espresso machine or if you have objects that are modeled out you can have maybe an entire island that you've created that you can easily just drop into your scene and this is a very intuitive library where you can just start adding these components and quickly come up with a design that has some great realistic assets added to it. And apart from the decorations, the materials work in the exact same way. And so here we have libraries of different materials that we can work with. And here real quick, let's go and switch to a material view. So here, if we wanted to change out colors of our design, here, let's go ahead and open up. I have this dark kitchen material pack that was included with that library I installed. And here we can just drag these materials onto objects. And when we click, we'll get this interface where we can specify if we just want to override that one object, we can just override the material that's assigned to that door. But all of the assets in Home Builder are set up to use material pointers. And so this object has a material pointer of the cabinet door surfaces. And so if we click update all, it's going to update all of the objects that are assigned to that pointer. And so here if we click on the cabinet, we can see that we have the cabinet interior surfaces, which is this white melamine, the exposed edges, and the exposed surfaces. So here we can just update all of those, and it provides us with a very quick way to try out different materials in our scene. We can update the floor material by just dragging and dropping that on the floor. And maybe for this back wall, we want this marble material. So we can just drag and drop this. And here, we don't want to update all of the walls. We just want this one wall to be updated, so we can just override that one. So as you can see, you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to laying out the rooms and it gives you a much quicker process to iterate through different options here. Now, if we wanted to create a rendering here in the rooms tab, we have this add room light. And this is meant to be just a very quick and easy way to add lighting. So here, if we switch to rendering here, if we right click with that light selected, we can always change 
the energy of that to brighten up that scene. But the best thing is, is that all of this is built into Blender and you have access to all of Blender's advanced rendering functionality. So here in this example, more time was spent on adjusting materials, adding accent lighting, HDR lighting, and using Blender's animation system, you can create animations like this of your design. And this is just using the EV rendering engine, but you can get even better results using cycles. So now I want to talk about what needs to be finished before the official release. As you can see, pretty much all of the core functionality is available, and you can use this right now as it is, but I plan to make a lot of improvements. These next tasks that I talk about are just the big tasks that need to be done before the official release. So I'm not including all of the new design features and new library assets that I'll be adding as I continue development. This is just what needs to be done for the official release. First, Having a complete set of documentation and a list of tutorials is essential for an official release. And this not only includes documentation on how to design with Home Builder, but also how to extend and customize the library. Now, this is a big task. It's going to take me a bit to finish, but this is essential. Next is being able to create 2D layout views. This includes being able to create 2D plan views and elevation views of your scene. Now, Blender is great for creating 3D renderings, but creating 2D drawings can be very time consuming using the default features in Blender. My goal is to create a feature where designers can click one button and automatically create these views with a title block, dimensions, and annotations automatically included. I've made some good progress on this, but there's still improvements that need to be made. And I'll be releasing some more information and videos on how all of this is going to work soon. Next is the Extended Asset Library. This is a way that I fund development for Home Builder. The add-on is free, but giving users the ability to support the project by purchasing a bunch of additional assets that automatically load into Home Builder is a good way to continue to develop free software. With the rewrite of the add-on, the way additional assets are installed has changed. This requires me to update the Extended Asset Library. And after it's updated, I'll be uploading it to the Blender Market, and anyone who purchased the Extended Asset Library on my site will automatically get access to the new version and all future updates. Next is manufacturing, and this is a big area I've been spending a lot of time on, and a big reason why it's taken so long to get to this point. And I know a lot of Blender users won't find this feature that exciting, but knowing that the designs you create in Home Builder can be manufactured in the real world makes your design files worth a lot more. I'm currently working with a company on this and we've been getting great results. They're able to pass all the machining information directly to their shop. It cuts all the parts, creates the hardware takeoff reports, pricing information that not only calculates the shop labor values, but also installation labor values, now this is specific to their machines, their manufacturing process and pricing structure. So this feature will not be built into the sample library, but in the future I plan to provide services and documentation for companies to create a similar setup and generate all of the manufacturing and pricing information directly from the designs. Now even though this isn't currently available directly from Home Builder, I have to make sure that the core structure of the library has the ability to extract all of the necessary information. Now this is working well for the frameless cabinets and custom closets, but I still need to implement functionality for face frame cabinetry. Now I'll be releasing more information on how companies can set this up as I continue development, and if you're interested, feel free to reach out through my contact page on my website, but I'm still a ways off from being able to work with other companies to set this up. And finally is geometry nodes. This is a new feature that was added to Blender 3 that I really want to implement into Home Builder. Geometry nodes will optimize the draw time of cabinets and reduce the amount of memory used in the design. Now there's currently some limitations on how UVs are generated for geometry node objects, so I might push this off to a later release in Home Builder like Home Builder 3.1 or 3.2, but my initial tests using geometry nodes are promising. I'll be releasing more information on how all of this can work soon. And that's it. Like I said, there are a ton of improvements and new libraries that I plan to develop, but I'm currently focused on what's required for the official release.
Now I know I went quite a while without releasing information on this project while I worked on the migration, but I'll be releasing videos on a regular basis to explain what I'm working on. So subscribe to the channel for future updates, join the Discord to ask questions, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.